This is Matt Ward at the Riverwoods Eye Center. I just wanted to show a case of Saltzman's nodular degeneration, the setting of pseudophagic bolus keratopathy. As you can see, there's a Saltzman's nodule here um, nasally, and this is a right eye. Um, sorry for the poor quality of picture. On placido disc, you can see the extreme distortion in the central cornea. And on OCT, there's approximately 250 microns of hyperepithelialization uh, there nasally. The pachymetry map demonstrates that the cornea is actually quite compact uh, temporally there, but up to 250 microns of additional thickness nasally from the Salzman's nodule. Confocal microscopy demonstrated only 460 cells per square millimeter, which is really not sufficient uh, to maintain adequate detergescence in the cornea. Here I am entering the epithelium down to Bowman's with the number 57 blade, and I realized this is just really loose and is going to come quite easily. So I just peel with the 0.12 forceps. The Salzman's nodule comes right off, as they almost always do. Salzman's nodules usually respect Bowman's membrane and can be peeled as long as you get a, the correct plane. Uh, this is a little comes a little bit easier than usual because of the bolus keratopathy. Preoperative placido disc image compared to the postoperative week three placido disc is striking for improvement in the regularity of the central Myers. Anterior segment OCT at postoperative week three demonstrates a dramatic decrease in overall corneal thickness after DMEX surgery and the uh, superficial keratectomy. In this case, the preoperative pachymetry map was deceptively normal especially in the temporal cornea, and one could have concluded that the cornea was actually not swollen. However, it was my feeling that chronic bolus keratopathy was at the root of the Salzman's degenerative process, and that endothelial replacement was critical to uh, prevent continued discomfort and formation of Salzman's nodules.